Andrew Young over at Center for Hip and Knee Replacement. We want to have a very quick discussion on the issue of numbness in the skin on the side of the incision after a knee replacement. Why it happens, how often it happens, and how we deal with it. Okay, so here we have knee structure. And it's important to understand that in order to get into the knee, we have to make an incision on the surface of the skin. Okay. When we make an incision on the surface of the skin, the nature of the skin will fundamentally change in two ways. One, there's going to be a scar, of course, and everybody sees that there's a scar. But number two, this is the outer side, this is the inner side. There's going to be numbness on the outside of that incision in every patient. Okay. And I'll show you why that happens. And this problem has been recognized for quite a while. This is an article back in 1995, and it specifically re refers to lateral skin flap numbness, or in other words, numbness in the area of skin on the outside of the incision after total knee replacement. And these authors looked at 25 consecutive patients after knee replacement and found all 25 patients had numbness in the skin. So it's inevitable. And again, we know this anatomically, and I'll show you that on the next slide. And this has to do anatomically with the innervation or how the sensory nerves in the skin develop and the actual location of the incision. So in order to get to the knee, we go through the front of the knee for exposure. But at the same time, the nerves that innervate the sensation of the skin run from this direction. This is the inside of the knee. This is called the saphenous nerve. And there are very small micro branches. So they start out large, but by the time they cross the knee, these are micro nerves that cross the center of the incision to create sensation on the outer side. So when we make an incision here, we're going to intentionally divide these micro nerves so we get access to the knee joint. So again, this is the saphenous nerve. This is the infrapatellar branch. And just like branch of a tree, it starts out big, but as it continues to branch, it becomes very, very small, and it's almost imperceptible to see. These small nerves provide sensation, but they'll have to be divided in order to gain access to the knee joint. But it's so important to put skin numbness in context. So numbness is a function of the nerves, but it's very important to differentiate that between uh, skin numbness and between major nerve injuries and total knee replacement. And when we talk about major nerve injuries, we're talking about something that happens very rarely, about one in a thousand, unlike skin numbness, which happens in every single patient. When we're talking about nerve injury and total knee replacement, we're talking about the large motor nerves that provide power to the lower leg and to the foot. And I'll show you the difference between those. So in this image, we're looking at the surface of the skin. So here's muscle or vessels. Here's that saphenous branch. This is the inner side of the leg. And you can see the infrapatellar branch. Now it starts out big, but as it goes to the lateral side, it gets smaller and smaller and eventually peters out into micro nerves. This is the sensory branch at the surface of the skin. In contrast, the motor nerve represents two divisions of the sciatic. So you have the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve, which will also divide. This provides motor power to the lower leg. This is what we mean by nerve injury. If there's injury to either of these two structures in the back of the knee, this is sensory. Dividing this is not the same as a nerve injury, even though nerve function sensation has changed. Compromise to this is what we consider a nerve injury. And this is less than one in a thousand. So to review, this is a very nice example. This drawing comes from the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons. And here we can see the relationship between the incision necessary for a total knee replacement and the anatomy. So again, this is the inner side or the medial side. This is the lateral side See the fibula here. We see the saphenous nerve and we see the infrapatellar branch crossing across, coming across the knee. Now, as we make an incision to gain access to the knee, we will intentionally need to divide these branches that provide sensation to the skin. And then when we look at the surface of the skin, we can see that the patient will have sensation over here, but on the side, on the outer side of the incision, or what we call the lateral flap, there's going to be an area of numbness because these nerves will no longer be connected to the main sac in this branch. Okay, so skin numbness after knee surgery occurs in every single patient. It's not a risk, it's something that we expect, and it's a necessary part 
or a necessary consequence of gaining access to the knee. Now, curiously, in one of those studies, only only about 50% noticed that they had skin numbness. It has no functional significance of having numbness, and it is not a nerve injury like a perineal or a tibial nerve injury is. It's just a natural consequence of needing to make an incision in the skin and having numbness on the outside. Thank you.